see that the drug sign is new? No! No! Been here a long time. Amen? Been here a long, long, long time. All you did was help the fact a little bit better. better. <laughs> <laughs> but let's look at what happens to people who religiously love. Let's look at one of the famous stories called the Good Samaritan. Amen? Let's go to Luke chapter 10. Actually, I would love to get the attitude of this person we're going to talk about. Y'all ain't getting bored with me, are you? No, Luke chapter 10. Oh, oh. Now, actually, I have to say, you know, my teacher taught me this, and I want to just compare it, and hopefully, in a way that my teacher taught it. But see, because I don't mind taking things. When you learn something, you take it and teach somebody else. Amen. But I do this would fit right here in this place. You know, these people talk about, oh, you copycat so and so. You. No, I ain't. I learned from them, now put it to my personality and ask my dollars to it and teach it to someone else. Everything I'm teaching you, somebody taught me. Amen. Same thing with a baby. When they first get born again, they don't know where the bathroom is. You have to tell them where they go to the bathroom. First you chase them. Then you say, oh, that's how you learn on your own years in. Right? Same thing with talking. Google, dad, 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 Google, dad, dad. No, say mommy, daddy, papa. Right? Amen. Same thing in Christ. You got babies, you got young folk, and you got old folk. Different levels of, uh, of, uh, of maturity in Christ. But let's look at uh, Luke 10, starting at verse 25. And it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, now how are you going to stand up and tip the man that wrote the Bible? <laughs> He's the walking way. Don't you know he know everything? He's the awesome. author. But this lawyer, because he's into the law, decided to tempt Jesus. And he said, you know, tempted him, saying, Master, you have a nerd upon teacher to Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, what is written in the law? <laughs> How read it? You read it? Amen. Jesus, don't read that law. This is it. And he answered and said, thou shalt, now watch it, now he just like, look at this prayer. Thou shalt love the Lord, thy <laughs> God with all my heart, and with all my soul, and with all my strength, and with all my mind. Sarcastic. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Thou his answer's right. This do and thou shalt live. But he be what? But he willing to justify himself said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? I said to you, who's your neighbor? Everybody. Who's your neighbor? Who's your neighbor? Right. Amen. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man. See, Jesus didn't even answer. He began to tell a parable. See, when Jesus tells parables and allegories in the Bible, he's not speaking to those who know it all. He's not speaking to those who are so religious they're no earthly good. <laughs> parables are always given to those who knew his voice and loved him. Amen. Why am I going to give you something I know all you want to do is use it against me? Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Here we go. Verse 30. And Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, <laughs> and which stripped him of his raiment or his clothes and wounded him and departed, leaving him what? Half dead. Yeah. Verse 31. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. Mm. And when he saw him, he passed by him on the other side. Now, you need to understand something. That guy who got beat up by thieves, he was a Jew. This road was a treacherous road. I remember when I first came to Alabama, they said, man, don't go on Mobile Highway late at night. You know, they will beat you up. Matter of fact, I had a Caucasian friend that was here with me named Ed. He said, man, I got to go back to the friendship and get my ID. I said, what can't go get your ID for? We only go on the stove. He said, man, black guys catch me down there and I ain't got no ID. It says Alabama, they're going to whip my tail. I said, what? <laughs> they going to beat you up for not having the Alabama ID. Amen. So, verse 31, and by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on by the other side. And likewise, a Levi, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other. How many people passed you by? Yeah. Amen. Amen. How many of your deepest hurt family members walked by? 
friends walk by you. The same friends that let you on payday. And you help them out to walk by you. Uh huh. But that's one thing. But when the church walks by you, ooh, ooh, that's hard. All right, man. I done had the church walk by me plenty and couldn't understand why. Where's the Lord? But God didn't show me I was worshiping them more than I was worshiping them. All right, man. Hello. Amen. That was a side break. Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he turned, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had what? Compassion. Now, this place is full of compassion. Even the rules that are being given to you are compassion, whether you know it or not. Because you can't live the same way and expect to survive. You're not here because you were surviving. You're here because you needed help. And God said, go to friendship, and I'm going to give it to you give you another start. Amen. But most of you went to your stinking thinking and said, boy, I can use this. Amen. So I'm going to use, eat here, sleep here, even though I got a job, and keep my money to myself. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You better know that's wrong. Yeah, that's wrong. If you can't afford to go and live somewhere, because most of the time the reason why you work the money is so you get high, so you get some hookah. And then when you miss a day and don't be there, the only reason why we know you missed a day is because you got paid. And now you can afford to go rent a room and go get high and bring a hook up in there. Amen. Amen. Come on, tell them what Amen. Then with all the money going, you want to come back to friendship, lock on the door. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then they want to have what? Their friendship says, have to cash. Bring them back. But this is what you got to do. Amen. Amen. Lord, God changed this. Verse 34. And went to him. Let's go back to 30. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil, oil and wine. We got to come back to that. And set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. Brought him to a whole cow. How many times pastors did that? <laughs> How many times? See, that oil, that oil and wine Verse 35. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host. And said unto him, Take care of him. And whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Look at that. He take good care of his people. Amen. This is a Samaritan. But the Levite priest will do what? Walk right on by. Verse 36. Which now of these three, Jesus asked in this lawyer, which now of these three, thinkest thou, was the neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, he that showed, what? Mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and practice. The word do in the Greek is practice thou likewise. Go practice what you just now told me. But let's go back up to where the priests start talking. Let's go back up to verse 31. And by chance there came down a certain priest in the way, and when he saw him, he passed over by the other side. Now watch this. The priest, he never got close to him. You know why he never got close to him? I had to write all this down. Because he didn't want to look like he was unclean. See, the biblical law says, if I go as a priest, go touch you, homeless, drug addicted, lay him outside of him, that means sin falls on me for seven days. So I can't touch you. That's why priests walk right on by. I can't touch you. Religious. Amen? <clears throat> he was religious and didn't want to appear unclean. He didn't want to get his hands dirty. Oh, Lord. Mm. He was so into the rules until he overdid being right. What's better? He was so legalistic that he forgot about the right thing to do. <coughs> I met a lot of like that at church. Amen. Amen. You know, I go to church, they see me out there on the street, they wouldn't pray for me. They wouldn't act like they even see me. Yeah. But when I got to church on Sunday, brother, we saw you and saw so Oh, you want to talk about the congregation now you see me? Well, let us pray for you and lay hands on you. Oh, now you want to lay hands on me in front of everybody. You know, I used to talk, don't you touch me. Show off in front of you on Sunday. Yes. 
They are saying, right? And the only ones that are gravitate to you is those who want to do the right thing. Amen. Believe Amen. Believe me. But you got to stand up and let them know you're not compromising. That you love them enough to not compromise. I love you enough to tell them. That. Man, that ain't, that ain't love. You a rat. Rats don't love. Rats eat your eyeballs out. <laughs> See, y'all never saw nobody with their eyeballs eaten out by rats. Yeah, go to enough homeless houses, homeless shelters, and enough homeless abandoned buildings where people have been found hanging because the drug dealers come in there hung. See, I come from a hard city, knowing these friends, and the only thing left on them is rat bites. And rats have a taste for eyeballs. Y'all don't know that. Y'all from the South and love that? Man, we got different kind of rats up north. I know So we miss it too. In the eyes of Jesus, saving your life is more important than being religious. Saving your life is more important than your title. Deacon, minister, hello, pastor, grand poobah. Oh. <laughs> there ain't no love in you. Amen. Doctor so-and-so, apostle so-and-so. What that mean to me? Don't mean nothing. While I'm up here, I'm Minister Warren Rudd. But when I get up off of here and I walk out there with y'all, I'm Brother Rudd. Amen? Amen? I respect those who call me by my title. God bless you. But I don't ride that thing. You know, I know when people call me by my title it's because they see that title for me and they love me. Amen. But whether it's Brother, Minister, or just Warren, it makes no difference to me. I fight my way into heaven too. Amen. I don't receive offerings. I've been doing this almost 15 years, been born again over 20, and I to receive an offering. But I got more reward than any million dollars anybody can throw at my feet. Okay. More than any diamond ring, more than any car. You know what I got? I got souls in heaven. Amen. I made Jesus rich. Yes. All right, Amen. 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 And I know my reward is going to be great. Yes. You can't give me enough money that God can give me. Yes. Okay. Amen. Amen. And you know, boy, you give me too much money, I'm going to go act like a fool. See, God can't admit that. Amen. Some of us don't need a whole lot of money. Amen. Some of us don't need no fame. Okay. We just need to do what Jesus tells us to do and keep moving if we just touch one person. Amen. You've been touched today, brother. Keep living right. Don't mean you're going to be perfect. But keep doing it right. And watch God bless you. Amen. Now, let's look at this. If anybody would have helped that man, you would have think it would have been the priest and the Levite. But instead, they will preach about you and talk about you. They should compare themselves to God, not the brother that fell. Amen. You need to compare yourself to God, not the brother that fell. Now, let's talk about the Samaritan. The Samaritan was, how many people were here of a different race? Oh, yeah. Back then, there were two types of races. One was called Jews, the other was called Gentiles. So if you were a Gentile, that I mean you were black, German, Spanish, French, you were Gentile, Greek. So the Samaritan meant that the Jewish man or the Jewish woman married a Gentile. They were called Samaritans, half Greek. Mm. So it was mixed marriages then too. Amen. And my sis, they were prejudiced. The Jews were prejudiced against Samaritans. Amen. Even Jesus told the Samaritan woman, I ain't come for you. I came for the Jew. Mm. Yeah. And what did the woman tell Jesus? Even though. Even the, oh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. She ministered to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen. 